Four games. Four Thatcher bands. Yeah, I'm mad. Are you done? I'm angry. Hey! Hey, that's more interesting! See, this is wild, right? And we need, we maybe need to touch on this. We're not... It's not that we want the new operator band. Like... We, we we want neither of these things. We don't want Thatcher Band and we don't want the new Operator Band. We just want different. That's the main like thing variety. here. variety. We want it's variety. The spice of life. So it, it might seem a little bit strange as saying like, yes, Flores is being banned, but that shows that these two teams don't want to deal with that. They don't want to, you know, because you think about all the power positions on this map that you can use the, the drones in, the Flores drones. There are so many. So it kind of makes that bit a little bit more interesting. It also brings... A different attacker available so it means that we've got maverick hibana we've got everything else available here aside from obviously the thatcher and the flora so it just frees things up a little bit a mirror and a clash it's it's kind of here and there um you know you would expect a mirror ban a clash ban maybe is a little bit of a weird one but... i think it's more of a target because santos have been that team who are very happy to bring out clash uh, especially on defensive rounds where they kind of want to throw something into the mix they're not too bad at clash the problem that they had with clash last stage is that it would look really good on her but then it would kind of get stale quickly and it would be read into but you can see if, if you are looking to take just a couple of rounds if that's all the game is then santos bringing out a clash would potentially be able to switch the way the momentum is going and i think phase kind don't want to deal with that makes a lot of sense they're a team that have, as you say, sort of crutched on to that. And it's, I think Cons has been one of the main players, but any one of them will pick the flash up on occasion. So, Faze starting off here on the defense. Santos starting things off on the attack. Arguably the more difficult side here on Cafe, but with a kind of strange choice for the first pick, Geo, reading room. It's it's not sort of down there in, in the dregs of the sites on this map because there aren't really any dregs. All the sites are good. Um, teams tending to favor, favor either the bakery or that reading room. Oh, you hate to see it. Round one. Set the precedent. Set the tone. Destiny. It's going to be another three dominance. minutes. It's horrendous. It is funny though. A little bit. Um, you know, what you were saying about reading not necessarily being the primary site, I think for a while, uh, in other regions especially, if we look somewhere like Europe, it did become that because R was being uh, read into a bit too much. Um, the same for some teams with Kitchen, but there were a lot of teams who did decide to go down to Kitchen for their primary. But then reading just became more and more popular. And actually, um, Face Clan did hover over going to bar at the start and uh, switched it right at the last second. And of course, they're already looking stronger because of that early pick, the spawn peak onto Destiny. And naturally, because you're not bringing something like an Ash as well, that's a lot of soft breach utility that's now been lost to the ether that you can't really replace. Santos can't afford to be fighting these rounds at a four versus five, especially Trying to get entrance and attack in to cafe. You need as many eyes, as many drones as you've got to try and effectively clear out this top floor. Of which not a lot has been done just yet. Hunter's got himself into the top of red stairs. We've seen a bit of a trend of teams just pushing a little bit too flat. Cons, had no idea that Bullet was playing on the pixel. That's a very strange place to not know someone's playing. Not just because you should have droned, but because it's Cafe Dostoevsky. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's always someone playing there. And now they're trying to get rid of him. Finally, oh, I was going to say, finally, a nade gets thrown in to try and remove the shield, but the ADS caught it. Hunter catches Bullet, just because he decided to push on forward, which was a bit unnecessary. But still, that was a, a real kerfuffle that I don't think was necessary. Bit of a kerfuffle, a lot of nades used in the process. It all sort of slows down this attacking push. SDK, he's going to be getting himself in from the bottom of white stairs, but he's got cameraman with a shotgun at almost point blank range. Oh, cameraman goes for the peak and he almost looked too deep. He will eventually redeem himself, shuts him down. Low health or not, he will be there to fight. 
rise. He aggresses on through and kind of instantly gets himself shut down. Hunter, he has the diffuser. He has intel. He's got 20 seconds. Can he find the first? Only getting peaked one at once at the moment as FaZe have sort of decided to just let this round play out in the course of time. Souls. How many times have we seen Souls be that dangerous support player? One of the last alive, I mean, there were four alive there for FaZe, but still. Round one going as expected. Yeah, um, that was not a great round for Santos. And I think they were definitely sort of thrown into a flurry when they lost Destiny so early. It was like a similar thing that we spoke about last week when there was a team that lost their Hibana basically immediately. And it was like, well, what are you going to do? Um, but when you lose someone that early, if that's going to throw you that much, hey, that's a, that's a really big floor that you should probably patch up. But secondly, it just seemed a lot like Santos didn't entirely know what their approach was going to be. They tried to come in through the top floor. They did so very overzealously at first and they lost a player for it. Then they kind of panic and try and take Bullet down. And sure, Bullet ended up walking forwards and straight into the gunfire, which was a, not the best decision in my opinion. And then they choose actually, no, we don't want to be up here. We want to go downstairs. And part of that may have been because if they had made it over to Cocktail and if they'd opened up the floor and if they'd been able to push down White Stairs, because they were so lacking in manpower by that point already, that would have been quite hard. So maybe they saw it as a kind of making up for their losses and they were going to go downstairs and try and push laterally that way. But the point is, it was just like a, a new decision was being made every few tens of seconds. <laughs> Astro not quite getting the spawn peak this time, but he certainly wasn't far off. It's always something that's going to be in the back of the players' minds for Santos, though, now is that that threat of the spawn peak. Is it coming this round? Is it coming next? You know, where do you really stand with it? It's a horrible position to be in, and it can, it can add, you know, five, ten seconds onto you getting up into the map or getting onto the repel. There's so much time of this map as an attacker is spent getting to this roof. And it isn't something that you can do for free. And on the way there, there's very little that you can do. You can check the windows, you can destroy a default camera. But ultimately, you are spending a lot of your time on Cafe just getting into a position to essentially start. That's the position that we do find Santos in now as they can start to get this drone work underway. Yeah, Cafe's an interesting one. Oh, nice kill. Okay, goodbye, Cons. And Destiny's going to be joining him in the grave too. So Santos, once again, significantly weakened, haven't even made it into the map yet. Uh, what I was going to say is Cafe is an interesting one because other than the roof hatches, if you want to go into one of the upstairs floors, there, there isn't actually another way to do it. I mean, I suppose you can walk straight in next to reading room, but as for the very top floor, there's not another way to do it. You think of something like Consulate, you can go in through the balcony. Something like Clubhouse, that also has balconies on the top floor. Cafe doesn't. So you have to take the hatches or the windows, and it can mean that it takes a significant chunk of time to actually set up what's below you and drone out the surrounding areas to even make the decision to commit to that drop. Well, Cyber is going to get himself dropped back into sight. Bullet getting a bit overzealous on the window. This time will be punished by rise that consistent flank watch for santos we always see him on the nomad ensure that those flanks are safe or as safe as they can be 45 seconds to really make something happen a fluffed nade there by hunter you're just gonna have to face check away two nades still in the hands of stk to try and make something happen with but with the hatch being watched to make it semi difficult for anybody to push in that direction. SDK, have they got any information at all? He's just lobbed a nade up red stairs. There's still shields in the side that need dealing with. Souls is just going to pop up from behind one of them. STK, I bet you wish you had the nade now. He eats a nearly oh. entire C4. He's left on one health. Astro, line him up and he will knock them down. Gets himself a couple of easy kills there. Just pushing in through from Bakery. Phase not really looking too pushed there. We're two rounds in and Santos do look a bit lost, don't they? It was the incredulity in your voice when you said, 
He just lobbed an aid up, up the red stairs there. And I was thinking the same thing as you. We're staring directly at a shield yep. that is in the line of sight of an open doorway. You have players who are looking that way. There is someone behind it. Hmm, I wonder how to clear out that person behind the shield. Maybe getting rid of the shield will help. Do we have any utility to get rid of the shield? Ooh, what about nades? You know, I, I, I understand. I'm being very arsy about it, but I understand that uh, maybe they had some information or something. Something made them feel like their best bet was to throw a projectile up the stairs. Maybe it was fear. In my opinion, what would have been better is, is use the nade for its intended purpose. And if you think someone's flanking you, put someone on red stairs. I think Rise was still alive at that point. And it'd be around to go back. And, like, don't get us wrong. You know, we know that Siege is, even at the highest level, isn't played entirely perfectly. And we will speculate on things for a long period of time when, in reality, all that happened was a nade got thrown. But these are the small things that add up to bigger things. So it's always nice to go back in that situation and go like, did Ryze have any air jobs left? You know, who was where? Was there actually somebody playing upstairs? And we can do that sort of stuff with, with obviously the match replay tool and go through and see. Because to us, it's an interesting decision. And we're not calling the decision out. We just want to know why it was made, right? Because there's a reason that the player has done that. And if it's a reason like, ah, oh, I didn't really know what to do with it. So I just did that. It's like, yeah, cool. That's fine. That is your reason. But if it was well, we wanted to mask the sound because we needed to do X, Y, then that's also a valid reason, so. Because I feel like I was a little bit like, he's just throwing the nade up red stairs, like, what the hell's going on? And obviously, like, it is difficult at that point to really sort of figure out what's going through that player's mind because they are in a very pressured situation. Yep. And you can't let the pressure get to you. I, I know that it's pressurizing to have a team like FaZe Clan as your opponent. I would feel the same way as well, but... I'm also, like, peak plat three, so it would be a bit different for me, I guess. But the point is, you can't, you just can't let the um, the pressure get to you like that. You will start to crumble and buckle at the knees. Now, Santos are getting very prepared on these windows, and I'm interested to see how this is going to go. If they can clear this space out, Bullet knows the position of one of these players, but is he aware that there's two of them? He gets stunned and decides to go prone to reload, and actually Astro comes in to get a kill. Oh, what timing on that ADS. If that nade had exploded a sec, like not even a second, a split second before traveling just far enough to get inside of that ADS, it maybe would have seen a little bit of success, but... Astro can count his lucky stars, along with Bullet. They have been able to stay alive there. Drones can now go out, and Santos... They've just got so many puzzles to solve here. We've not only got the laser gates, but we've also got castle barricades. We've also got a smoke. There is so much time waste on this side that FaZe are bringing. It really is no wonder that we're seeing Santos sort of stall out and, and struggle in this mid to late round when they do lose things like a lot of that soft destruction that you can deploy from range because it is going to make it very difficult to get on in and to do all too much now there's only so long you can hold the angle for on repel before you've got to try and attempt to peek on through that ads has regenerated astro playing beautifully patient here he actually has a rotation how has cyber been able to find that kill onto cons oh, that's no not way. only a big frag but it is the diffuser as well with only 20 seconds left, you don't really want to be going out of your way to pick that guy up. Oh, Hunter, he's going to be on the skylight. Now, typically, we've seen him hold plants from there, but this time he doesn't have that luxury. He has to try and get himself on through, and our players are still looking to challenge on windows. It's going to be a very short, sharp end as kills start to come on through. Cyber, he finds Rise. The other two players do remain alive, but time will win it out for FaZe. That was not one for the highlight reel, I don't think. And, I mean, you astutely put it when you said they were just stalling out. Santos really struggled to move forward, and it wasn't... They didn't even get close enough to the Aruni gates and to the castle barricades for it to be that. You know, they were already stumped at the windows. The ADS thing that you mentioned that was probably more relevant to preventing santos from moving forward the fact that astro was so ready to come in and support bullet when there were two players 
on the windows who were specifically trying to target Bullet. Not only did Bullet get away with his life in his own right, but Astro then got the kill onto the players from Santos who were trying to kill Bullet. So they failed to get the kill that they wanted, even after stunning him out. They failed to get a successful nade, because there were ADSs and we'd clear out. And then they died in the process too. I, I don't think they were even in the vicinity of the Surya gates or the castle barricades for those to even matter at that point. Well, it could be a short NGO, yeah, depending could. on how this game plays out. Santos are going to have to... I, I want to use the words, do something. Because we just kind of didn't really see them do all too much in that previous round. There were attempts made, but... You know, at the, at the time where there's, you know, the clock's ticking and we've still got players out on the rappel and they're not even attempting to get themselves in you've got to wonder like yeah your plan hasn't gone well but we still need something out of the attack there's still a chance you know it, there's there's every chance inside a siege you need a bullet that's it one bullet could be one kill that's all I you mean, might need face clan have a bullet he's gonna do have a bullet he's on jaeger right now they also have a lot of kills geo yeah and three rounds yeah they got 13 kills just counted Crazy that's really, that's really and impressive. nutty. Thanks. Um, yeah, and so Santos are going to be coming in to try and attack onto Reading once again. This was the site that back on round number one, they really struggled with. They got spawn peaked. They were already at a huge man disadvantage very early on. So they decided to give up on the attempt at uh, an upstairs take because they couldn't really deal with Bullet and his utility up on Pixel. Decided to try and come in for a more lateral take, very close to where these FaZe players are standing right now here in mining. So you can, you know that FaZe are just so ready for any of these options that Santos could take. Now, there's the, does the shield actually get destroyed by the lifeline? Because that was the whole aim of using the lifeline. Uh, there's a nice evil eye as well. I mean, this is a very classic spot to put an evil eye, but you just get such a broad scope of information um, including anyone who may be passing in through Cigar. Shots now being exchanged. Astro gonna take a little bit of damage there as STK will be the first to fall. Cameraman lands a C4. Destiny and Hunter trying to push their way on through. The site is gonna be reading as FaZe have already done a clean sweep of this map. At least their three sites, their chosen three, and they've Gone back to their first round choice. Kind of strange not to see upstairs being pressured as heavily, but we have seen teams attempt this very flat take, and Santos is one of those teams. Don't forget, we saw them play Cafe last week, and it was a 6-8, so it did go to overtime, but it was a short overtime. They weren't able to get the win over Black Dragons, and... It did show us some good things. One of the criticisms that we have was that they weren't working in the same direction. They weren't all doing what needed to be done. But we can see that coordination coming here from now. And it's assisting them in being able to get some jobs done. But they're still not able to win out on these gunfights. Bullet eventually will fall. But Cameraman has picked up two kills inside of the round. Make it three. Finds another in Rise. Able now to make the rotation. Cons the last live. Cyber picking up the pieces. Four rounds for phase. Oh, they, I mean, yeah. Uh, it's a very strange game. Probably a very strange game for phase as well because they don't really have to show that much. It's not like they've got to go out of their way to give away strategies or anything like that. Um, and it's very interesting to me, thinking back to the pregame when we were talking about how Santos felt like they had given phase a lot more leniency in the map veto back in stage one when they ended up playing on villa it was a 7-2 victory to phase clan now santos evidently came into this game wanting to be a bit tougher on the map veto we've also already seen santos play on cafe dostoevsky in this stage so we know that it's a map that they feel comfortable playing on that they've worked on and that they would like to play and yet it seems to be going pretty awfully for them right now That's certainly one way of putting it. Santos are struggling in that 
coordination department, struggling in that kills department. Really just coming up against uh, a phase that, let's be honest, they're not playing aggressively. We see phase and we sometimes question that play style. And I think it was something that I said last week was that phase is sometimes that remaining team inside of the R6 that have that old LATAM flair, that raw aggression, where it's very untempered when it's on. And they can turn it on, they can turn it off, and in this game it seems like they've turned it off, which is interesting because it's a game that is going very well for them. But we see them just go and be wild some days, and it works, and some days it doesn't. And they, they're still developing that sort of strategical side of things, whereas t today they're just playing good siege and they're coming up against a little bit of aggression here and now. Astro, he's going to be ready for it. In fact, he's ready for two. He's able to take both Destiny and Cons out of the picture. Two players are going to be down. SDK finishes off Souls. Essentially, three versus three now as Rise has been revived and finds himself a nice frag. Site control now firmly in the hands of Santos and... They've really just said, you know what? We don't want to go down without a fight. We're going to attempt a bit of a rush and see if it pays off. So far, they have the plant down. But they are in a man deficit. Bullet is still not been able to push his way back on into sight. It's a full retake here for phase. One C4 in the hands of Cyber to try and make the job a little bit easier as he makes his way through prep. Astro, he's found three kills inside of this round. Cyber picks up the last Plenty of time to disable that kit. Even a rush was not enough. You know, when Astro got those two kills and I said, what was that? It was because I was so taken aback by it. You know, I did not expect uh, Santos to just decide to walk straight into the site. In fact, one of the things that I was thinking of bringing up was the fact that because FaZe Clan had opted to go for a bandit, that was going to put a lot of pressure on Santos because it would have required them to play vertically to remove the bandit batteries. And FaZe Clan likely would have set up players upstairs to ensure that Santos couldn't even get in those positions in the first place. But that isn't what happened. Santos decided to just walk straight into the site, something that took me really aback. <laughs> it afforded them two deaths very early. And yeah, it was actually great that they managed to get the plant down. But of course... Huge man disadvantage at that point. FaZe Clan were suspiciously nowhere to be found when STK walked into the site, which meant that they would have been in the surrounding area and ready to collapse in as soon as the plan went in. And uh, that is what happened. I really admire the attempt from Santos. They knew that what they were doing before wasn't working. They simply had to try. Um, and I always like it when teams do try things like that because you can take the enemy off, you know, off guard you never know what's going to happen, but it just, in this case, wasn't enough. One round left before the change. The FaZe is going to give themselves an easy time of things and put themselves onto a match point here, or are Santos going to come at us with a little bit of a fight back? Let's see if everybody makes it to the building safely. As FaZe have been known to get that little spawn peek off. Again, the setup, very intricate, very time wasty. The numerous punch holes. Of course, bullet holes not being a thing. Got to opt for the full punched out hole. But the laser gates, the castle barricades that are seemingly all being prepped. It's going to be a lot to deal with. Yeah, the castle barricades, of course, if you if you routinely punch them like that, and I believe it's 11 that you have to do in order to make it just kind of one punch before it uh, blows down, you're essentially prepping it so that you can burst straight through it should you need to. Um, so that's not for the sake of bullet holes or anything like that. It's just to make the castle barricade vulnerable enough that you can walk through it without actually having to use any utility or uh, go through the effort of time required to destroy it. And I think that in this case is mostly so that the player who's over in Cigar, if Santos come in through Piano and they start to burst in here, it'll be very easy for them to actually act on that. Gone six, maybe got eaten up there, as this was where we saw the brilliant ADS placement. 
This time, no ADS in that location, just behind the stage. Instead, it's going to be behind the sofa. And there's players occupying that zone. Astro, currently in freezer, but has the rotation open. Still not looking to play too aggressively onto this. You do wonder if FaZe have got themselves to the point where they're like, you know what, we could really make this quite easy for ourselves. And kind of Astro's patience there shows that they're just going to try and do exactly that. SDK responds, taking down Cyber, a player who hasn't been as loud as we've seen him previously. This has really been the Astro and Cameraman show up until now. STK though, has a chance to push on through into Bar. Souls is going to be holding that as a fairly long angle from New Cocktail. Hunter on the skylight. We've seen Santos try and hold plants from up here before, but you worry about if they're able to get themselves in. They've not got a lot of cover here. That's the biggest problem. They've got one stun, and that's really going to be it. So they're going to be out in the open, and, well, that's why you prep your castle barricades. Able to burst on and through. Cons will take down Souls. Bit of information coming in here as well. And Hunter says, well, I've got to get in myself. I'm going to try and get the job done. He drops alongside Rise. Cameraman, he's going to get himself downed as he looks to try and hop over quite aggressively. These kills really go in, in Santos's favor. Astro comes in and he tries his best, but it is not going to be. Santos, they finally pick a round up here. Uh, nice. It was very messy, but it was great that they could do that. And I think... One of the really valuable things about the way they came in with that attack is it was, well, aggressive. And um, it certainly took FaZe Clan off guard. And I think a lot of what went well for them, especially towards the end of that attacking round, is what they were hoping to go well for them back on the previous round when they burst into the kitchen site. And it was interesting, too, because FaZe Clan were trying to react to it to make room for themselves. I mean, we saw the way that the uh, cameraman kind of dropped himself off the ledge because he knew he was going to get down and he wanted to be in safety. But FaZe Clan still had utility that was being used. There was a bulletproof camera that was up on the wall of Cocktail that was being watched. It was flashing away. And yet, because everything was happening so fast, that information is very hard to directly work off of because your enemy is being unpredictable and they're being erratic. Um, and I think that's the problem that FaZe Clan faced there up against Santos. Unfortunately for Santos, that was their last opportunity to actually try an attack, even though they found something that kind of worked for them, I guess. Um, that was their last chance to do that. So the sides have switched. Santos are now on the defense, which assuming uh, or considering their playstyle, I would assume that the defense is going to suit them a little better. Nice drone uh, is going to alert them to Hunter's location as he walks up the brown stairs. Well, the classic FaZe Clan drone. We see it all the time. And <laughs> it's a wonder that people haven't started sort of cottoning onto it. Because it's a really common one. But, alas, it's going to provide a little bit of information for the time being. Attacking onto that top floor. Gonna be a uh, quite an aggressive one from FaZe by the looks of it with the lineup that they're bringing. They're bringing the Doe, could be the bringing Capital. They're heavily disruption based operators and they might be trying to flex this big round advantage that they have currently. It could give them a little bit of opportunity to work with, some chance to really play quite aggressively. Cyber so decided he didn't like the look of any of that glass inside of the skylight and we're just cleaning up the edges there it can give you a slightly neater line of sight especially when you're trying to really precisely challenge players inside of the freezer everyone for the time being on the side of phase is waiting as they formulate the next part of the plan or all get into that position ready for that execute i like that drone that we just saw from souls because that's given him all the information he needs as to where these players are through into pixel because of the line of sight Capital sending in his bolts and some of the smoke from the Docker B as well. Now there is just fire everywhere and Santos want to avoid the conflagration, but first kill goes on to Souls. That is quickly returned though, as Cyber gets the next. Ooh, oh no! Unfortunate stuff. Hunter's going to take down Rise with his C4. Cameraman, he's trying to nail that plant and the covering fire is going to be there. Cyber, 
eventually is taken down. But Hunter, he was in a one versus three. It was always going to be difficult. We had Astro coming up these white stairs. Bullet and Cyber. What a duo there inside of that round. Covering the plant and really opening up that side. That's going to put FaZe onto a match point. So I guess because Ninjas and Pajamas didn't get a 7-1 this time, FaZe have decided, you know, we will lift the baton for you. We will take it and continue on forward. That's so kind of them. They're such, such, such a good friend. It's very gracious. NIP. It really is. Um, no, I mean, obviously there is a chance that that doesn't happen, but right now it looks like that's the way it's going to go. Um, now, interesting to me here is that uh, Hunter has decided to bring Whamai was one of those things that I was thinking about in the last round is when you're going up against Capital, you should probably bring a Wamai because uh, he is the only one of the two projectile stoppers who can stop Capital's projectiles. You remember when it was like, you know, whenever, when Wamai was just introduced into the game competitively, anytime you would see a Wamai ban, people would always ban Capital as well. Yeah. There was that stage. Capital really is one of those that falls in and out of favor as well. It's like, I can't remember the last time that Capital had like a real significant change aside from like propagation and swapping out his, whether it's a Claymore or a Stun or whatever it might be. But he just seems to, he comes in and out based on defenders and, and based on like things like you say, like the one eye coming in. Yeah. And it's someone that FaZe have regularly chosen to bring. I really like Capital because it speaks to that good old-fashioned execute where you're expecting <laughs> something to happen when you see all the smokes coming. You're like, yep, yeah, these guys are prepping. They've smoked off Freezer, and they're going to drop in and try and get something happening. And, and that, that's one of the reasons why I just really like Capital. I really get excited about it because you know that teams have a specific plan. They don't just bring him on a whim. I'm a big fan of Capital being used into small spaces like garage rafters yeah. or like a tiny little room or whatever. In that last round, he certainly wasn't used into a small space. He was used down through the skylight and basically covered the entirety of the bar. So, you know, uh, but now they're on kitchen. Likelihood is that's not where he's going to be used. And he could be sent into freezer. It could be sent into prep. I guess we'll have to find out where cameraman intends to press that utility. Hunter and SDK are holding on very firm in Bakery for now, though. Souls with the Kali. I didn't even notice that a Kali had been brought. Could be either a big impact or not so much as kills all they start to go in oh, no. phases of favor. Can they lose a gunfight? We are going to find the answer to that. The answer is going to be no. Cameraman is the one to find the final frag. They had gathered their information. There was no execute required. Baze, they're going to take this map 7-1 here against Santos. That was a really humiliating loss. There isn't really a better way that I can put that, and it sounds cruel, but that's what it was. You know, Santos didn't even do terribly last week. They looked like they were putting something of a fight against their opponents. But this is the first time that Santos have faced against one of those top four teams 